Hey guys, it's Rachel with Be Heal Dog Training, and I've got corn tip number 10 for you. Um, first of all, I want to apologize for not getting these corn tips up for the last couple of days. I've just been a little overwhelmed, a little, um, little too much on my plate lately, so trying to get some things organized. Uh, if you don't already know, I'm in the middle of trying to get moved into a new house. The closing date had to get pushed back. I had things that I had to to deal with with that. Of course, the two young kids, the three dogs, um, there's still, even though I haven't had as much going on on the page lately as I normally do, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on right now with Be Heal Dog Training, so I don't mean to leave you guys with silence lately and I apologize for that, but there's lots of work being done as I prepare to start back my board and train programs and once this coronavirus stuff eases up, um, get back into private instruction and things like that, so there is more coming. Um, I think I see Danny on. Danny, if you're there, hello. Uh, but anyway, so I'm sorry I've not had these tips up in the last couple of days. But what I want to talk about today is how exercise for your dog is not necessarily the answer to um, helping you with your overly energetic dog, your hyper dog, um, or for stopping on one of the behaviors. And I want to talk about this because I hear this a lot from people who are struggling. I've had clients come to me in the past. This is just a really common thing that I hear. I'll hear like, oh, my dog has so much energy. They're really hyper. They're jumping on me all the time. They're constantly underfoot, running around the house, barking out the windows, blah, blah, blah. And I try exercising them. I try, you know, I, I let them out in the backyard and let them run around for, you know, two hours at a time. Or... I've heard people say that they are taking their dogs sometimes on several miles a day walks um, that are several miles a day and they go, you know, the dog's still not tired. And here's the problem with that approach. With exercise, especially when it's not very structured, you're not addressing the mental issues that there are or the mental state. Um, it doesn't mean your dog has mental problems if they're overly excited, but the case with most of these dogs that have all this energy is they don't default to being calm. And I talk about default a lot because it's really important. Um, they don't default to being calm. They default to being excited and hyper and that's just how they respond to their world. Whether that's through things that make them uncomfortable. Um, there are plenty of dogs that misbehave because they're uncomfortable and they're like, I don't know how to be better than this. Um, but then there's also dogs that are just kind of more on the happy-go-lucky, excitable side and, you know, always in your face sort of thing. Uh, you've got anxious dogs. Sometimes you can get a lot of energy coming from anxious dogs. So um, the problem is they do not know how to naturally be calm, and you actually have to teach them that. Um, you have to go through a process to teach the dog to be calm, and when you're trying to address a mental state, wearing them out is physical, not mental, um, depending on how you're doing your exercise. And we're going to come back to that in a, in a minute here. But um, just letting your dog run and try to burn off energy. I hear that all the time. You know, we try and burn off some energy by letting the dog run the backyard. Well, when I hear that, what I'm picturing, what's typically the case is a dog who is running the backyard um, chasing squirrels or barking at people who are walking by or running the fence line with other dogs um, maybe even fighting fence fighting with other dogs and um, it's very unstructured and what that does is it allows the dog to just mentally amp up more and more and more um, and you know so it doesn't get them out of that mental state same with if you take your dog on a walk and you're going, like I said, I've, I've heard people who literally will go for a couple miles a day trying to wear their dog down. And yeah, the dog might come home and crash, um, you know, have a good 20, 30 minute nap afterwards. But man, once they're up, they're moving again. Um, if you're not walking your dog with a lot of structure in that case, then again, you're not addressing the mental aspect of it. You're just addressing the physical. And you can have a dog pulling on the leash, sniffing everything. You know, their attention is going everywhere and they're not paying attention to you. You're not addressing the leader-follower relationship that you really want with your dog. You're not getting engagement from your dog. And, you know, a lot of times people tend to, to feel bad asking their dogs to work on a walk because they think, oh, this is my dog's walk. I want my dog to be happy and enjoy their walk. But the thing is, 
you can put a lot of structure to your walk and, and your play sessions. You can have high levels of structure and still be having a lot of fun. I feel like Monica from Friends. Like, structure is fun, guys! You know, and, and dogs really operate that way. Like, just because your dog is sniffing the ground and pulling on the leash and barking at things when they go by, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're having fun. Um, it doesn't mean they're in a good place mentally. So, you you know, you really need to have a lot of structure in your walks, teaching the dog to walk in a heel and working on engagement with your dog and putting your dog through obedience drills. Great for getting attention from your dogs and getting that engagement and making them work mentally. And when you want a dog to be calm, that's a piece of the puzzle. It's definitely not the whole thing, but you want to make their um, physical workouts also very mentally stimulating. And, you know, rather than letting your dog just run loose in the backyard for an hour barking at anything that goes by, which, by the way, will drive your neighbors crazy um, and probably drives you crazy, too. Instead, you can have your dog running in the backyard playing fetch with you or, you know, practice your impulse control, especially if you've got a dog that likes to play with a ball or a toy. Practice your impulse control. Um, you know, throw the dog and practice recall. Throw the dog. Don't throw the dog. <laughs> Throw the ball, practice recalling the dog back before they get the ball. Um, throw the ball, practice having the dog go into a down. And it takes lots and lots of training to be really successful with that. But again, when you're putting structure to these physical activities, now you're getting the dog to think. And that's going to transfer over to your downtime. A dog that's mentally tired, is a, mentally tired and physically tired is a lot more... Um, tired than a dog who's just physically tired, if that makes sense. And, and you think about it, if you go out and you do something that's pretty physical, you're tired for a bit and you get up and get moving, but when you take a really hard test, like sometimes that'll wear you out even more. You're done for the day. Um, so it's the same thing with your dog. And then also, how your dog is spending their downtime is really important. So having lots of structure in place every single day, and I won't go into that too far in this particular video, I'll kind of glaze over it, but having your dogs in place rather than free roaming through the house, working on your threshold training, working on your dog waiting before they eat their meals when you put their meals down, um, basically anything that you can do to have your dog check in with you and engage with you um, is going to help them actually be calm. Um, and so, for example, I've got my dogs right now are out in the other room, but they're not loose wandering the room. They're all on place. You know, they're all sleeping on place. They are in a command, even though they're in the next room over, um, because they, that's what's expected. I put them in that command, and that is helping to teach them how to be calm. Um, and when we talk about all this stuff, too, we're not trying to take the drive out of a dog completely. That's not the point. But we're trying to help the dog learn how to exist and default to a calm state of mind when they're in the house or when they're you know, working with us um, and letting them have that excited, drivey time when it's a, an appropriate time to do so. So, you know, if you follow me, you know Belle. Belle is a very high drive dog, lots of energy. If she didn't have the structure in place, she would be a nightmare. She was a nightmare when I first got her. Um, and doing all of this, you know, practicing our duration work and practicing our impulse control and having all of this structure, having all of these rules helps her to be calm in times like this. When I'm trying to make a video, I don't have her running around the house, tearing things up, barking out the windows, which she did when I first got her. However, she's also not just a couch potato. She's not a robot. I hear that word a lot. People are worried, oh, if I correct my dog's behavior or if I make them be calm all the day, I, I don't want a robot dog. You don't get a robot dog. Um, the moment I let that dog outside and pick up her ball, she is, you know, wacko girl and I love it. And it's, you know, we can have fun with it rather than it being this really obnoxious, burdening behavior. Um, so again, this is, I wanted to touch on specifically the aspect of exercise and this misconception that tends to be out there that, you know, if you have a dog with too much energy, you just have to exercise them more. Now, exercise is really important, and I'm not downplaying that. And especially when you have a drivey dog, a working dog, like those dogs need jobs. Um, you know, you don't want to sit here and get a German Shepherd or a Border Collie and then just hang out and chill in the house all day and expect them to have good behavior if they don't ever get time to go run and play with the ball or herd sheep or, you know, do something. And that's not to say that, you know, you can't have a border collie if you don't have sheep for it to herd. You can give them all sorts of other jobs.
but they need something to do. And the more that you can put some structure to that, um, the, the better off they're going to be because then they're working their mind. And, and that's good for them. And they enjoy that too. You know, it's, it's fun to do this, these mental exercises and give your dogs challenges. Um, scent work is great if you can teach your dog scent work. Um, you know, teach them agility. Teach them, um, there's the, oh shoot, what's it called? The luring. There's all sorts of sports and things you can get into with your dog. And even if you don't have the, the time or money or ability to get into a dog sport, you can turn your backyard into a sport. You can turn your walks into very um, challenging, mentally stimulating activities for your dog. You can do a lot for them. So keep that in mind. And I'm going to leave you with this. If you are just letting your dog burn off more and more energy outside, like, oh, I'm just going to give them extra time to run it off out in the backyard, or, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about structure on my walks. I'm just going to walk them for a long time. You're not addressing the mental state. You're building an athlete. And when you're building an athlete, that means they're building up their stamina. I should have started the video with this because this is important. I, I hope everybody gets to this point in this video. Um, they're building stamina, which just means they're going to be able to go on for longer with obnoxious behaviors, you know. So keep that in mind. If you are trying to just let them burn off energy, that could really come back and bite you in the butt. So um, be prepared to put in the work with your dog. Dogs are work, you know. They, they're they not meant to just be couch potatoes all the time. Those dogs are out there, and that's fine too. But if you're struggling with the overly excited dogs, keep all this in mind. So hopefully this helps some people because... I'm trying to address, you know, a lot of the common misconceptions that are out there and the really common complaints that I hear from people who are struggling with their dogs. So, you know, maybe this gives you something new to think about or helps you go, oh, we need to buckle back down on some things. I know I do. You know, I've been a little slack in some areas myself. So, speaking of, I'm going to go get my dogs and do some stuff with them. And I will check back tomorrow, tomorrow, with another corn tip. I'm going to get back into this. Sorry for not being here recently in this last week. You guys take care. Thank you for anybody who's who's been watching live. Feel free to pop on and say hi anytime you guys are on these videos when they're live. And I will see you guys tomorrow.